Okay, it's story time. When we bought this house, part of our search criteria was that it had an unfinished basement. Reason being, I was gonna finish it out and turn it into a rental unit so that we can generate some more income. Our church reached out to us and said, hey, we need a place to put some people that are going on a mission trip for about a year and a half. Can we put them in your basement? So now my timeline moved up from about six months to about three. I need to do the insulation. That's probably gonna happen tonight. And then a lot of soundproofing. And I say that because having tenants in your house, we wanna make sure that they have a comfortable stay and that we do as well. So we don't want them to hear us and we don't want us to hear them, especially with our, our kids running around upstairs with all the little feet patter. I've also done a couple things like install this window. That sucked, don't recommend it. I probably spent about six hours just grinding through all of this concrete and cutting out this giant slab. It probably weighed over 800 pounds. I've also got the shower insert installed. You can see right there. I basically got everything done that needs to happen before drywall, except for the insulation and some of the soundproofing. So let's jump into that. Now for all of the exterior walls, we're gonna be using fiberglass insulation and that's because it has a really high R value. Then for the ceiling, we're gonna be using both fiberglass and rock wool and I'll explain why in just a bit. Some of you have probably noticed and are probably about halfway through typing a comment about how I don't have insulation where the concrete is. And yeah, I don't, and I don't need it. That's about eight inches thick of concrete and it's a very good natural insulator. And on top of that, there is dirt on the other side of that concrete, which is another really good insulator. So I'll only be insulating in between the studs and above the concrete. This was the first time that I did insulation on a large scale, and I have to stress that PPE is so important here. If you're gonna do insulation, make sure that you're wearing pants, a long sleeve shirt or jacket, gloves, a respirator, and goggles. Not just any eye protection, that has to be goggles. Otherwise, you'll still get particles that fall into your eye. Just trust me on this, I learned the hard way. It's about 2 a.m., just finished insulation, super tired, but so far this has been one of the most satisfying and itchy things along this entire process. Because I can finally start seeing the walls take shape. I can actually see the bathroom for what it is. There's only one wall that I can't insulate yet. That's because we haven't totally finished electrical. And that's this guy. Just a couple things left, like we gotta wire up a ceiling fan and a couple switches. So. A little update for you. Okay, so now that I'm done with the insulation, let's move on to the soundproofing. So these are the three most important things to do in my opinion. So right here I have two types of insulation in front of me. The first is just a typical fiberglass insulation. This is what most homes in America have. The second is actually a wool insulation. So this is called rock wool safe and sound in particular, and it's specifically designed to help with soundproofing. Fiberglass insulation actually has a higher R value and it's gonna be better to insulate your house for heating or cooling purposes. The rock wool on the other hand still does a good job of that, but it leans more towards the soundproofing because it's so dense that it also has those capabilities as well. So, so if you don't care about soundproofing at all, I recommend going with regular fiberglass insulation. It's honestly not that much different in price, uh, but it is a little bit cheaper. Rock wool, if you're doing a basement, use this all the way. So I used both of these. I used fiberglass in all of the walls, and then I used rock wool in the ceiling. The second thing that I did, which is not very well known, is called sound isolation clips. Sound isolation clips look like this. They're metal clips, they have a rubber gasket on the top, and they have a hole in the center for the screw to go through. Now these sound isolation clips work in tandem with this hat channel. The clips get screwed into the lumber, and then the hat channel slides into that and locks in. Now these clips are meant to be spaced every 24 and 48 inches. And what these accomplish is they isolate the ceiling from the floor joists. So if you have a movie playing with a lot of bass or if you have footsteps, the sound travels through the floor joists and then into the room below. But this is pulling the drywall off of the floor joist and most of those vibrations are getting lost inside this rubber gasket and they're not even making it down. Insulation like rock wool is gonna help a lot in terms of 
like a loud TV, this is gonna help a lot for footsteps. In my opinion, this is one of the most important things that I did to soundproof my basement, so I recommend you look into this. And the third major thing I did to soundproof my basement was use two layers of 5 8 drywall instead of half inch. Two layers of 5 8 drywall is 250% as thick as half inch drywall. And drywall is really dense and it's a pretty good sound insulator. So having 250% as much drywall really helps with soundproofing, but there's more to it than just the thickness of the drywall because where two pieces butt up against each other, there's a seam right there. And so sound can actually travel through that. All that there is is a piece of tape and a thin layer of mud. So it's really easy for sound to transfer through that at the seams. So with two layers, you stagger those seams. So anywhere there's a seam, there's a whole sheet behind it. And so the sound can't just travel through those seams. Now those are the three most important things, but there are a few other ways that I soundproofed as well. This is joist tape. This was meant to be placed on top of your floor joists before your subfloor goes on. Its primary purpose being to prevent squeaking over time. But it also has a similar effect as the rubber gasket on these sound isolation clips. Not nearly to this extent, but it's about a quarter inch thick of foam. And even though it's gonna be compressed a little bit, it still really helps with the vibrations that are traveling through. So if you don't wanna blow out your budget and go all the way with sound isolation clips, you can just order a few rolls of these and just put a strip down each stud. It's meant to be stuck horizontally, not vertically, and so it, it's not incredibly sticky, so it does peel off the wall a little bit. So just throw a staple in at the very top and you'll be good. Next, I use these putty pads. The technical name is TMS Acoustical Putty Pads. So they're rated to stop sound, and so putting them on your outlet boxes is gonna make them a lot better at stopping sound from passing through. And another thing I did was walked around with a can of spray foam and I just used this to go around and fill in all of the little gaps because if air can pass through, then sound can pass through even easier. Installing the sound isolation clips and hat channel is pretty straightforward. You just have to do a little bit of measuring and planning. The clips are spaced every two feet when going vertical and every four feet going horizontally. And they just take one two and a half inch screw. This hat channel is really a one-step process. It's pretty thin, so you can cut it with tin snips, and then you just snap it right into those sound isolation clips. If you remember, this is what we're gonna be screwing our drywall to, so make sure that these are dead center on two, four, six, and eight feet. Otherwise, the drywall is not gonna land in the center of the hat channel. I finally have everything done. We are ready for drywall. I got all the plumbing, all the framing, the electrical, the soundproofing, the HVAC, the insulation, everything done. You can see the rock wool in the ceiling. And in the bathroom, you can see the sound isolation clips all on all of the exterior walls. Now with this wall, since it's a 45, it was gonna be really difficult to run the sound isolation clips, and the hat channel. So instead I just opted to put the joist tape on there. And I did the same with this wall at a 45. This was gonna be a sound isolation clip wall. I ran out, so I had to use a joist tape. I'm sure it'll be fine though. So drywall is coming tomorrow, but we'll see where we are after that. I did two sound tests. The first one I played back in black, full blast, full bass, everything, on the ground in the living room upstairs, which is directly above the rental. And the second test was footsteps. In before and in the after, I still have Back in Black playing at the same volume and in the same spot upstairs. And for the other clip, I have the same people walking in the same place upstairs. Now I'm not gonna get into the nitty gritty about price because it's gonna be so different depending on where you live and how much square footage you're finishing if you're doing the walls and the ceiling or some of the walls or maybe not the ceiling. It's just not gonna be helpful. So instead, I'll say that my apartment was 800 square feet. I did soundproofing on half of the walls and all of the ceilings and in total it came in at $3,000. Was it worth it? Yes. <laughs> 
every single penny was worth it because our tenants don't have to listen to us upstairs and we don't have to listen to them. Obviously you can still hear stuff. It's virtually impossible to get rid of all sound, but it is significantly reduced. If you're a fan of mediocrity and you thought this wasn't terrible, you should subscribe to my channel. I basically invented mediocrity. I still have quite a few videos left in this basement renovation. This isn't gonna be a six to 12 month long series like other YouTubers have where they're doing a renovation or whatever and they're slowly coming out with the content as they do the project. I've already done everything, so it's complete and I have all of the content. So I'm gonna be releasing a video every single week until it's done. So there's only about five or six more videos left and then you guys will be completely caught up and you can see A to Z how I built this apartment. Now, if you're doing this for your own basement or some other project, I'm gonna have links to all of these products in the description. So check those out if you're curious. I'm Clayton, the Weekend Builder. I'll see you next time.